Hey guys, Pringle Gaming here and welcome back to Talk The Wall Podcast. It's episode 5 and me and Taylor have plenty to talk about, ranging from a first day defeat to Nottingham Forest to Jimmy Abdu scoring a wonder goal. Yes, this did actually happen. But if you have missed any of the past four podcasts, then there's going to be a link in the description for episode four, or you could click the i button and catch up with anything you may have missed on the playlist. If you do want to voice your opinion, send an email to brandonprangle at gmail.com. If you don't know how to spell that, don't blame you. It is on the screen right now. Or you could leave your comments in the comments section down below, and me and Taylor will talk about them next week. Now, before I go into the podcast, I have finally returned to making videos on YouTube other than podcasts. I do a post-match thoughts and a preview videos that have gone up on my channel. And, well, I actually spent about four hours making the post-match thoughts for Nottingham Forest, making the graphics, getting it up. And, well, I'm recording this on a Sunday, the podcast. And, well, I was up to about 12 o'clock making that video for it to go up when I was still sleeping at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, check it out. It's all readers. Designed. It's looking nice, and I hope you guys do appreciate how much effort I put into this. Anyway, this is the podcast, and well, we're going to be starting with Nottingham Forest, the game that we actually lost. Taylor, what's your thoughts on this defeat? Uh, I'm not ashamed of the team, of course, because we did play well. We did dominate them uh, from the start to the finish. Just they had a bit more of the possession than us. Uh, but can I just say that that, that goal was clean there's nothing wrong with it all right well fair enough i guess it's a good idea for me to give myself on the thoughts of this match i thought the team were absolutely phenomenal we honestly played brilliant all my dreams actually came true with the performance against forest i mean yes forest aren't the best team in the league let's be honest but we were playing outstanding. BBC Radio in Nottinghamshire, which was the station I was listening to, were just talking about how Millwall were getting in behind. Wallace had an absolutely fantastic performance. And, well, it was the strikers that let us down. Surprise, surprise there, really. I've said for such a long time, Morrison <laughs> and Gregory aren't the best of strikers. And, well, guess what? Aidan O'Brien missed about three golden opportunities. Now... I do have a different opinion on that goal, and I do feel that the goal that we actually got disallowed, I feel that even though it could have been the goalkeeper running into Gregory, I do feel that it should have been given as a foul, and I do stand by the referee. I think it's harsh, I do, but I've seen them given quite a lot, and it, it's unfair on Millwall, but sometimes these things do happen. We're just going to have to go and just not let that control our season. So if you have to give a score prediction for the Stevenage game, what would it be? Leave it in the comments down below. I reckon 2-0 Millwall. As I have a feeling that we're due a win in the cup, especially last year against Nottingham Forest with a Williams wonder goal. The League 2 sides do tend to knock us out quite a bit, but I think we have a good feeling about this one considering we did draw with them in pre-season, so I think we might want to show that we're not a draw inside. From championship and I'm actually gonna go ahead and go with a 3-0 win I do think that we've got to beat this curse of League Two sides knocking us out in the cup in the first round it obviously happened against Barnet last season but also adding on what Taylor said why not let us know your Bolton predictions as well as that's gonna be a game I'm really looking forward to now, a few things have happened in the world of Millwall. Firstly, Ben Thompson said that he wants to prove a point with Millwall doing a lot better than everyone's relegation predictions for this upcoming season. Tomo also said that he's extremely looking forward to travelling to Ellen Road to face Leeds. Neil Harris also said that Ryan Tunnicliffe was a target all summer and he's a completely different player to their other main man target in Ryan Leonard, saying their style is completely different. They both do different things with a football. Following that up, Steve Morrison talked about budgets in the championship this season. He said there is no way that Mill could match the enormous budgets of other championship clubs, saying that if we're going to be in this league, we're going to have to fight, show determination. Money isn't everything in football. As long as we stay together, we will be fine. The summer signing of Jake Cooper 
got a lot of people talking and Cooper himself actually said something really interesting on his interview on iFollow. He said that before he'd even left the den last season, he told Neil Harris that he wanted to return. And well, it was a surprise to me that he came here. But he made his mind up very early on and he said this is where he wanted to play his football. He did also say that it was really weird training with a different side and playing with his Reading teammates knowing that his head was elsewhere. Now we obviously talked about the goal that was disallowed in the Nottingham Forest game. Harris gave his thoughts on this one. He said that... I don't think it was a foul by Gregory. It looked more like Smith ran into him. Everyone is saying it's a goal, apart from the people that matter on the pitch. It's a shame, really, because all the managers like to see is that refs and officials are consistent in the game, and they weren't in this one. And a final piece of news is Neil Harris explaining why Byron Webster didn't feature for the Lions in a particular lineup that really did shock myself. Harris said that three of the four that played at Wembley missed out. It was a really hard decision for him. As he said, in the end, he just had to go with his gut feeling to play Coop and Hutch. He said that players that missed out will have to prove they're ready to feature in the upcoming season. Now, I'm going to be introducing a new section to this podcast, which is looking at where Millwall are in the league. I'm going to call it Where Are Wall? And this is obviously subject to Bolton versus Leeds. And we are currently at the moment 21st after a loss this week to Nottingham Forest. But we are just above Sheffield Wednesday, Barnsley and Reading at the moment. Into the loan watch this week. And, well, Jamie Philpott managed to win 2-1 at Woking when they played Gateshead, but he didn't score when he came on in the 70th minute. The other player to go out on loan was someone that did score, and I think we will all be surprised. If you haven't seen the goal, please go watch it. Jimmy Abdu scored somehow. I don't know. He scored on the volley outside the box, if I've been told correctly, for AFC Wimbledon when they drew one all with Scunthorpe. Not a bad first performance for him, and he did pick up a yellow card in a match where he linked up with Liam Trotter and Paul Robinson. Liam Trotter plays what Wimbledon. do you feel? Yeah, no, what I'm do you I feel about that. Wimbledon? How do, how do you think that that goal was great? Have you seen it? Um, No, I haven't seen it, but a volley from outside the box. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm literally. It was an incredible goal. Yeah. I don't. I don't even think that a goal and Abdu come in the same sentence usually. But that was just outstanding. Yeah. I wouldn't see. I wouldn't give Abdu that much criticism because, in in a way, he is a Millwall legend. Uh, but uh, he doesn't really score. He's more of a get the ball and pass it through to like create the attack. Yeah. So then, for him to like go on loan and then score why couldn't he just do that at the den yeah it's it's a real shame but we've got to be fair when abdu did score it was a good goal so i'm glad that he's actually doing well at wimbledon at the moment yeah we also are adding a section to this podcast where we follow former Millwall players and talk about a couple of select names in the podcast. The first one is Lewis Graban. We literally <laughs> was blasting him, saying he wasn't a great player. And he scored. And yeah, he scored an equaliser for Sunderland in their one all draw with Derby oh, County. Sorry. It was from the spot, so it doesn't mean he's great, but he did hit the post. That's more like the Graban we know. Yep. Good old Graban. James Henry was the next player, and he played the full 90 minutes for Oxford in their 2-0 win against Oldham Athletic. Not a bad start to the season for a side that could really challenge. Since when has Henry yeah, gone no, to Oxford? Yeah, he left Bolton in the, the summer. He, didn't, he left Bolton, obviously, he was playing there. Wolves didn't want him. And so that just meant he was free to go wherever. And he, he actually moved on to, to Oxford. And I think that's a fantastic transfer because he should be in the championship, not League One. He was a great player, wasn't he? Great, um, well, great player apart from when he was at the spot and he blasted it into the upper tier. Is that... Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you do uh, get that. You do get that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, he's, yeah, he's, not final, he's not a League One player. the final that we're going player. to be talking about you don't reckon, yeah, no. I, I think that's, to be fair, I would be. But someone that I'm surprised by playing in League 2 is Carly Osborne. He's joined Grimsby Town 
and they won 3-1 against Chesterfield. He may, he was just on the bench. He didn't even feature. I'm really surprised by that, to be honest. He's an actual... He was a really good defender when he played for us. He just didn't get game time. Yeah. And into your views and opinions. And we will start with Joe Holloway, who was very vocal this week, saying, personally, I knew Cooper was coming back, so it really wasn't a surprise. I'm still happy to have him on board. He then did follow this up by saying Tunnicliffe, Saville, Williams and Thompson are here, but we still need an attacking midfielder to go forward. Taylor, do you reckon this is something we need? And if you do, who do you reckon we could get? Uh, I reckon this is someone that we actually do need to try and target. And then I've been saying this for quite a while. I think I've already said it once in this podcast, like in like the series of podcasts. But I'm going to say Billy Sharp. Yeah. All right. I really like the geezer. He's a really good player. And he did score for Sheffield United. He did, yeah. And it's which shows that he is a scorer. And that's why I do like him as a general. So even though for some people might say he's a bit too old, I reckon just get him now before like he gets way too old and then he's out with it. Because it does show that he's still scoring in the championship. So it obviously shows that he's not past it yet and he's still scoring. So that's why I think that he would be a really good signing for us as Millwall. Fair enough. And well, last week we talked about the worst players and and Joe actually had an opinion on this one. It was quite funny. Mm -hmm. He said Ricardo Fuller or Stefan Meyerhofer. So what one do you reckon's worse? Um, It's a shame that Wall isn't in there. (laughs) Uh, Got it in there. You right. managed to get it in there, that's it. Mm. I'm going to say Meyerhofer, because yeah. I did say him as a thing last time. Even though I think Ricardo Fuller was actually a pretty decent player when yeah. he was on a good day. I was going like, to say, we were like three nil. Yeah, we were 3 nil down to Wolves uh, at home. He came on like in the 60th minute, and he scored a hat-trick. Yeah, so I do like him, and then um, also when I went Oldham away when he played for Oldham, uh, me and me uh, mate snuck into the dressing room, and uh, like we saw Ricardo Fuller and that got a picture of him. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, Fuller. Fuller was one that I think he was like Gregory and Morrison. He probably could have done more, and I do feel that his biggest downfall was the fact he lost his way with the fans. As soon as you lose the fans, you're getting nowhere at a club, and yeah, that happened to him. But I do actually feel that he was not too bad of a player, and I don't think he should be close to where my offer was. My offer was another level of just terrible. Harry CD touched on something that you know when you're talking about Sharp, about older players... Yeah. So he said, for some reason, we have an obsession with buying players that are 35 years old. I remember Michael Tun, less said about that, the better. <laughs> now, if I have to give an opinion, I feel that I don't like signing older players. I don't really like older players in and around the team. That being said, we have had a couple of good players that have been fairly old, but I do feel that now with the younger players coming into the team from the academy, I feel that it's better run and we've got our soul back. Now, do you agree with that or do you think that we need some older players in that team rather than using just players solely from the academy? See, I do like some older players in the mix of the squad. But only reason because that we like need experience and even if they're just like someone who drops back a bit and lets them like push forward like we need experience in that team someone who can carry the youth players I'm not saying that they need to stay forever but just sort of teach them the way how to play sort of thing Fair enough. And Joe Holloway gave his opinion on this one. He said, we've always been that type of team, never focusing on using the academy players. I'm glad that we're focusing on them now. Now, you obviously said that you believe that we need some experienced players in with that. But do you think that we've got a lot better at using the academy than we used to be? So, like, my um, sort of thing with this, like, I am glad that we're using the academy again because we need some experience as well to carry them through when we don't know, like, our footing sort of thing. But with um, 
like Noah Cheeseman, Christian Malumbo, all of them people uh, coming through the academy. And even Ben Thompson came through the academy. So I think we need to like focus a bit more, but then again, sign some experience, sort of halfway in between. Okay, fair enough. And can I just say at this point in the podcast, I do apologise if you hear banging and clattering. Again, this is going to happen for the majority of the podcast. I have no control over it at the moment, but I do need to make these podcasts. And this, well, this is the only scenario that I can get it at the moment. And, well, Joe Holloway actually had a swipe at you, Taylor, when talking about David Ford. So I'll read what he says, and then you can give a response. Mm, he said, I've read it. "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> he said, "You might not remember, but Ford is a player we've had for a long time. His last two seasons wasn't his best, but he's been our goalkeeper for a long time. And if we didn't like him, why would he have stayed?" Now, obviously, you responded in the comments section, but tell the people that didn't read the comments section what your views are on this one. Um. Well, I reckon. See, the thing is, like, we signed him in two thousand eight from Cardiff he was good then sort of thing like and then when we got promoted to the championship it just went Pete Tong like he's just not played to an extent that should be acceptable for the championship like you see how some of our past players like Casey Keller and all of them played when we were in the championship and and then like division one which is the premiership now um, but you see how they sort of reacted. And the thing is, as he got with age, he slipped. Even though with goalkeepers, it's normally the other way around. So I just don't really like him as a goalkeeper. Uh, he wasn't really one of the best that we could have signed, I don't think, at the time. Uh, and if and I remember you saying last week, like, he made most, si- like, most like, caps for Millwall and stuff. Um, but then, like, he was the only goalkeeper playing. So, of course he's going to. And I think we needed, like, someone like Archer in the team at the time to, like, sort of back him up, as he did before. And then when Archer got sent off, you actually realised how bad Ford he was. Um, because then he started playing Oxford, he's played Barnsley, and all of them games we lost. So... Fair enough. It's an awful shame that Archer was growing up and he wasn't around at the time, ready to play behind Fordy. Now, um, in all seriousness, Harry CD also added a comment to this, and I'm going to talk about that, talk about my comments after I've said his. And he said, Fordy must have been one of the only goalkeepers that, like you said, has got worse with age, but he's still no doubt a club legend. And as his younger years, he was a terrific keeper, hence why he was the number one for Ireland. And to be fair, he did make a lot of mistakes in his last year or so, but he would still come off with a world-class save here and there. And I've got to agree with some of the parts that you've said. Yes, Fordy was Mm. quite bad at some points, but at his best, he was an outstanding goalkeeper. And we really did need him. At points, he really got us out of some difficult situations. So I kind of like him... Possibly more than you do, I think it's safe to say. But that's not a problem. It's fair <laughs> enough. We are all entitled to our opinions. That's what makes this podcast oh, yeah. so great. Yeah. Now, Harry CD did say a couple of other things. And he agreed with my comment about Neil Harris being the only man that could possibly take us to the Prem. He said, I agree that Neil Harris is the best man who could well take us to the Prem and still maintain the reputation and culture the club has without getting it ruined by the cash in the Prem. And... His final comment was, I think that the sky's the limit for us this year. This squad is the best one I've seen in my lifetime. And it's definitely challenging our 2004 squad with Tim Cahill and Neil Harris in it. Taylor, what do you reckon about that squad? Do you reckon it's as high quality as a squad from where Cahill and Harris were playing in? For me, it's certainly up there, but I don't think it's as good. Um, it's like definitely up there, considering like I remember when we had... Michael Tong, Lewis Graben. Darker times. Yeah. Really darker times. Terrible, uh, ter- terrible players. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, like, of course, Harris, most high score scorer, like, ever for Millwall. And then we have um, Cahill, who 
scored against Sunderland to send us through to the FA Cup final and then plus scored from then. So I don't think that Gregory and um, Morrison are on equal level. Oh, nowhere them. near. Nowhere near. <laughs> that's why I'm saying no. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, that that's definitely fair enough. I'll give you that one. I don't think the strikers are anywhere close. I don't think we'll have strikers that are that good for quite a long time. I think Morrison's been great for his time, but I have a really love-hate relationship with him. And, well... We've got a final question here, and this is from Liam Gaming 2. He said, who do you think will go down this year in the championship? So I'm going to let you go and say the first ones. But before you do, I also, after that, want you to say the three teams you expect to go up in League One. Yeah? All right. Well, I'll say my one. So we got 22nd, I think, are going to be Queen's Park Rangers. I think that Holloway, as much as some people do like him, I just feel like he isn't the greatest of managers. And I think QPR haven't exactly been the best of sides recently. Now, that being said, they, they did actually win their last game. So it could be a great season for them. You never know. But I just I can't see them beating the drop, surely. 23rd are Burton Albion. How are they still in the championship? That's really what sums up this position for them. Now, I do think they're a great side. I think they've actually done all right with what they've got. They're a pretty small club, and they did fantastically to stay up. So I feel that their luck's going to run out, and they are going to go down. They're not exactly your typical championship side. They weren't even a great League One side at points. So it surprised me when they did have that brilliant season that got them promoted. It really was a bit of excellence from the manager to get them there. And finally, this is going to be a very controversial one. And again, the banging is there in the background. I can only apologise. 24th, I would say, would be Bristol City. They've lost Tammy Abraham. There is no way in the world they are going to have a great season. They haven't got a strong squad. And Lee Johnson is going to have a very hard task of keeping them in the league. Though they do have a new striker that they bought for 5.3 million. So if he scores goals, I reckon they'll be fine. And he did score on the opening day. So you never know, but I just doubt he will. Now, for the League One promotions, I'm going to go with top of the league, Charlton Athletic. Maybe a bad decision here being a Millwall podcast, but Carl Robinson is a brilliant manager, and I think they just had a bad year. It's time for them to finally return to the Championship. Second are a side that should never have even got to the Championship, Blackburn Rovers. I think they're going to go straight back up. Tony Mowbray was brilliant with them. He almost kept them in the league. And if they keep Danny Graham, please, they better go up because they've got a great squad. And I also forgot to mention, they've signed Bradley Dack. Gillingham are going to struggle. <laughs> and the final team to go up is going to have to be Scunthorpe. I think they're going up through the playoffs. And if they can get Josh Morris to replicate that form from last season and Paddy Madden to score as many goals, I think they will be strong contenders to go up to the championship. Now, are you ready to say your ones? Right, so I reckon in 22nd is going to be Ipswich Down. Um, I don't I don't think that they're going to have as My good a season this season <laughs> as they did last season. In, uh <laughs> I know they're gonna. <laughs> uh, in twenty third, I am gonna go with Birmingham City. Uh, again, I don't think that they have a good, good enough or capable enough team to stay up this year. And then twenty fourth is going to be Burton. I don't think that they're gonna have any stand in this season. And then um, to go up from League One. I reckon the winners, uh, I reckon the champions are going to be Blackburn. Um, I, they're not a, uh, they're not a League One team. They shouldn't have gone down. It should have been Forest that went down. Um, and then second, I think that it's going to be Rotherham. Again, not a, not a. Like a League One team, uh, they did do like quite bad last year, but I think that this year they'll try and um, they'll come back. So I'm gonna go with them, and then third, or oh, playoffs, I should say. I reckon it's going to be um, Oxford because they have signed the likes of James Henry and 
Yeah, and like they did come close last year, so that's who I'm going to say there. That's a fair enough shout. I actually think Oxford are going to surprise a few this season. And so there you go. There's our predictions for going down in the championship and, well, going up in League One. And, well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this week. Do feel free to send those emails to brandonprangle at gmail.com with the subject header, Talk to Wall. And I will look through them and add them to the podcast. If you don't want your voice to be heard, then you could easily just put it down in the comments section. And obviously, we will go and check them out next week. And so, obviously, that's a bye from Taylor. See you later. And that's a bye from me. We'll see you guys next week. But obviously, I'll be seeing you in the other videos that I make going up on my channel. But until next week's podcast, like, comment, subscribe, and see you next week. Goodbye.